Let me ask you something real quick. What do you believe to be the most game-changing guitar pedal to have come out in the last 10 years? Better yet, since the turn of the century in the year 2000. I know for sure that every player would essentially have a different answer, but I'd be willing to bet more than a week's allowance that there would definitively be a group of people who said the Strymon Iridium. But why the Iridium? It's not like it's the first ever pedal format model or that's ever been built, and even in more recent years with developments like the UAFX pedals and like something like an ACS-1, it's had a wealth of competition that guitar players really haven't been able to ignore. But on a mainstream level, I do feel like the Iridium did something really big. For a moment, it really did feel like this standard, where even if someone was comparing something that they said sounded better, they still had to compare it back to what felt like this constant standard. And I think a lot of that is because if you break it down, the Iridium is a very straightforward thing, and I don't mean that in a bad sense at all. It has everything you're used to, three amps, three EQs, three cabs. It was pretty much as simple as they come, and much like the aforementioned players and resources that I was talking about, about, once I first got word of it, I had to consistently compare it every single day to every other model out there to see if it was really the best or if there was something better. But that's where I kind of discovered something interesting. It first caught my eye when I was just a wide-eyed newbie at my first ever NAMM show, just trying to hold on for dear life as I navigated that NAMM convention show, trying not to get so overwhelmed that I could never come back. Now, thankfully, I had quite a few friends who were willing to help me with this, just show me around, show me the ropes, show me where I might find Steve Stevie Wonder if he happened to be there, but there was one friend I was particularly excited to meet. It was a guitar player whose name happened to be David Kim. Now, I had met David earlier that year just through Instagram when I was looking for some other funk genre related players, and I was immediately floored with everything I was seeing. I'm talking easily some of the best gospel guitar playing and tones that I had ever seen in my entire life, so I knew that once I met him in person, I had to ask, what's the secret sauce? And so I get there, and I'm walking around essentially with no direction, just lost, have no clue what I'm doing, and and I get a text and the text just says, hey dude, can't wait to meet up. Make sure to stop by the Humboldt booth and stay high. And I'm thinking to myself, the what booth, the who? And he's like, Mike, just come through. So I walk over and I'm super excited to meet my friend. And upon seeing him, of course, I barrage him with about 20 million questions. How did you get so good at gospel? How did you get your rhythm stop so good? Who are your inspirations? And most importantly of all, how in the world do you get those tones? Now, I was fully expecting and ready to hear that he used a hand-wired Princeton that was mic'd up with a U87. 414 stereo setup going into another room that you couldn't see off camera with a Neve console, but he ended up telling me something much, much simpler. Actually so simple, he tells me that he's just going into a simplifier. I was like, hold up, hold up, a simplifier? What even is that? And that's when I quickly realized that the simplifier was made by Humboldt, which was the exact booth that we were standing at. And before I could even take in all this information, he hands me a sunburst strat, plugs me into what looks like an iridium, but with 50,000 knobs and says, dude, you have to try this. And so I start playing this thing and it sounds pretty good, but I have one slight problem with it. It's really, really difficult to get an objective opinion on a piece of gear when you're sitting there at NAMM playing it, surrounded by 10,000 people just trying to bulldoze their way so maybe they can get within arm's reach of Stevie Wonder. Now, fortunately for me, that problem wouldn't persist because eventually I went home. But for the last year, I've wondered what it would actually look like if I ever got the chance to take an objective look at the simplifier. And that's where this sort of comes into the picture. This is the simplifier. Well, I guess technically this is the simplifier deluxe. And here's the spark notes, and make sure you pay attention because there very well could be a test at the end of this. It's a stereo amp modeling pedal, and like a lot of modern modelers, it has three amps, three cabs, three EQs, but here's kind of the kicker. It just so happens to be all analog. With three actual power tubes, a 6L6, an EL34, and a KT88. But why does that even matter? You see, 99% of the all-in-one modelers that come out today happen to be digital. And even on the occasion when you do see an analog one, it rarely has all of the onboard effects that would put it into the classification of an all-in-one rather than a pedal platform. And so when something like this starts to come out that has all of those onboard effects, it really does start to stick out, especially with it being so small. I mean, look at that. And I know the other question you're surely asking, and the answer is yes, all these knobs do have a purpose. But upon first opening it, that was actually quite intimidating to me, and I knew that it was really important that I was honest about that. It's a little bit different than the simplifier I used in NAMM, but with more buttons. I think I'm genuinely confused at where to even start. I know you can do two amps in parallel, but I want to start with something simpler, pun intended.
pretty much have the basic functions down, but I know I'm gonna need to call the expert if I'm ever gonna like realize the full, full potential of this thing. So at Coachella, you brought the simplifier. Cause I remember you told me that. Yeah, this is what I use for Coachella. These are actually the exact settings I use for Coachella too. The tech guy was um, Kendrick Lamar's team. He really liked it. It cuts through the mix. There's no nonsense, it's simple. It's the mightiest box. It's so small, but it just does all of it, man. You can essentially use it as an all-in-one. 100%. And again, I haven't really gotten to know it yet. But sitting with someone who so masterfully had made me realize I wanted to. I feel like I'm finally gonna get to use this the way it was supposed to be used. So as I started to realize the tone potential of this thing, I began to really ask myself how it would work in real time as a part of an actual rig. So I have a gig coming up and saving room on the board is a big help. Cause this is my first time even thinking about using it with other pedals. I think the question becomes more than just what can I get away with? But that's a genuine question if I wanna see just how simple this board can be, pun intended. There are definitely certain pedals I'm more excited to try with this. Not gonna lie, the Fender model can get pretty cool. Okay, so real talk, to get to the heart of what I'm thinking, I feel like we have to bring it back to what this thing actually is. And at a very base level, I could use all of the buzzwords to describe it. It's a game changer, it's the future, anything like that. But even more than that, I think this in its truest sense to me represents possibility. Like it's more than just another Helix alternative because the way I've seen the guitar market go recently, I feel like there's not really a lot of competition for the high-end digital modelers, the Helix, quad cortexes, the head rush, everything in that vein. And even with me using something like a simplifier as an all-in-one because of the knobs, because of the tweakability, I tend to see it as more of a successor to a Strymon Iridium or an ACS-1 rather than a direct competitor to something like the Helix. I essentially really do think there's nothing quite like the analog all-in-one modeler on the market right now, but I also don't want to be blind to potential outside arguments. With technology getting better and more innovative, there really is a unique upside that comes with digital modelers, specifically when it comes to there being little to no need for hardware updates nowadays in some cases because software updates are just getting that good. And I think people generally know that with something like this, you're not gonna get a firmware update every six months. Now, that would definitively be a problem for a lot of people, but what I can see analog lovers and fans rebutting that with is that to them, the sound of actual tubes is pretty much timeless. And when it comes to a hardware problem, it's pretty much offset by the fact that with something like this, you're essentially paying one fourth of the price of any of the big and popular high-end digital modelers, while also having a pretty malleable frame of what something like this can be as an all-in-one modeler or a pedal platform while still maintaining its relatively small size. It makes me wonder if similarly to today, how we have people complain about lugging around heavy tube amps, if in 10, 15, 20 years, we'll have people who are like, dude, why would you ever carry around one of those super heavy all-in-one digital modelers when you can get something so much more compact and the cycle will eventually continue until we have microchip size amps that can fit in our back pockets. But those are just kind of the weird thoughts that go through my head. <laughs> but my weird thoughts don't matter quite as much as yours. So please tell me what you think. Are you an analog person, a digital person? Are you an analog all-in-one person? Please let me know in the comments. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. It was so much fun after almost a year to finally be able to check out the simplifier. I've been thinking about it for a while, see what it's actually all about and to see what the analog all-in-one modeler is really like. If you wanna know anything more about this bad boy, I got it from the homies at Sweetwater. The links are in the description. Make sure to check it out. It's one of the best ways to support the channel. If that's something you wanna do, 
or if you're just curious about any of the other gear I used in this video, make sure to check out those links. Also, thank you so much to all my patrons. The full interview with David is on there if you want to check it out. Like and subscribe if you had a good time, and most importantly, like most important of all, have a fantastic day.